We all know that no two snowflakes are alike, but why is that? Two, uh, well, snow crystal, which is the correct term, uh, experts uh, have been weighing in the question, Kenneth Lebrecht and John Hallett, uh, both professors and directors of Ice Physics Laboratory uh, in Reno, Nevada, were able to, to start to unravel the mystery, if it were. And it kind of is unraveling if you think about how a snowflake forms. Well, what's funny about this, I think, is how it's almost like a matryoshka doll, like one of the Russian dolls, where the, the further than you unravel, the more that you discover. Mm -hmm. So we all thought that there were no two snowflakes alike. And um, a guy named Wilson Bentley took pictures in the late 1800s and started categorizing snowflakes. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, Snowflakes are not the word that scientists use, they use snow crystals. And snow crystals are these droplets that in the clouds, they condense and they solidify. So they skip the liquid stage. They go straight from uh, gas to solid. Now, raindrops that freeze, which is what we tend to think, especially as children, no. of what snowflakes are, <laughs> no, um, are actually just um, sleet. sleet. So snow crystals um, are just the individual ones, and snowflakes would be basically a combination of several snow crystals mm -hmm. to combine and make a snowflake. Now, this Wilson, uh, Wilson Bentley started categorizing them as pictures and discovered that no two snowflakes were alike. And then a woman came in in 1988. Uh, her name was Nancy Knight, and then she discovered two identical snowflakes. <laughs> Here's the thing, if you can't actually observe every single snowflake in the world, how do you know that there are no two alike? So we know that uh, humidity and temperature are what contribute to the formation of these snow crystals, and that's why we get different forms. And then all of a sudden you have Lebrick, who uh, made a beautiful chart that I think we have for us. And he started going even further into this and said, okay, so she found two identical snowflakes, but actually, out of every 500 um, oxygen molecules in water, most of them being oxygen 16, some of them are oxygen 18, so that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get um, deuterium, I don't know how you pronounce that in English, deuterium, uh, instead of regular hydrogen molecules, so, uh, atoms. So no two snowflakes, if you go really deep, are identical. They're more like Siamese twins. So this is this chart you, we were looking at showed the difference between supersaturation, which is humidity, mm -hmm. and temperature forming these different shapes. And But then we also have the factor of them forming uh, sort of independently of the liquid state. So the, they were talking about there's a nucleus almost to mm -hmm. each snowflake that you can't really find uh, by even looking through a microscope. It's more like maybe it's a little speck of dust and whatever has gathered around that. And then we have the factor of the humidity and temperature together forming that, which colludes for different shapes, but then it's possible to be similar or the same. Well, the, the thing about the humidity and the temperature is they dictate how fast the crystal forms. Mm -hmm. And because of the unique um, shape of the water molecule, we're gonna have a hexagonal lattice no matter what, mm -hmm. because that is how they bond together. But depending on the humidity and the temperature, it's gonna be faster or slower, and that is what is gonna start making this you know, beautiful snowflake idea that we have in our head with the branches reaching out and stuff, versus the long wands and you know, kind of the other shapes that you can get the snowflakes from. Very cool. I haven't spent a lot of time in snow, so I've only seen snow once, uh, but let us know about yours. If you found two that are alike, which is, as we found out now, very possible. Let us know below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe.